let's take a look at a row with seven stitches and how we could make a right slanting increase on this row. The increase is to the right of a particular column of stitches. So I'm going to knit two stitches and then make my increase before knitting the third stitch. So my increase is to the right of this stitch, it's on the right hand side. And the easy way to do it is to turn the work over so you can see the purl bump of the parent stitch below and tuck your needle in from above. You can also lift the side of the parent stitch up and pop it on the needle if you prefer. But if you get into the hang of turning the knitting over and sliding down the next stitch into the shoulder of its parent, then it's a one stage operation. Now from that position I can knit this stitch and this comes up from a row lower than the following stitch so I like to give this just a little extra yarn. Then we knit the following stitch or we might even want to purl that stitch. So this stitch is actually independent of the directions. So this would be knit two right slanting increase and then if I wanted to finish the row it would be knit five. I don't consider that stitch, the one after the increase, to be part of the increase directions. Uh, but different designers have different approaches on this situation. But there is your right slanting increase. It all comes out of this column of stitches and it sort of branches out and becomes two. It's quite a subtle in increase. Whilst we're looking at increases, we might as well look at the partner to the right slanting increase, the left slanting increase. So if I wanted to make my left slanting increase two stitches away from the edge or to the left of this stitch, first I knit the stitch or work it, could be purled, and then I knit into the shoulder of the parent stitch of the one I've just knitted. I can't knit in here because that's the one I just knitted. Its mother is down here. And so you have to reach down and tuck your needle in and knit up. And again, the stitch comes from a row lower than the other stitches, so give it a little extra slack. This type of increase shouldn't be done on consecutive rows in a similar position, because it, it will otherwise cause a pucker along that line. But every four or five rows will be fine, and I use them for sleeve increases to the right and to the left on near the respective edges. I've returned to the seven original stitches and if I were writing this row of directions and I wanted you to knit three stitches, make a right slanting increase, it would then result in knitting four stitches at the end of the row. So this row would, if I were writing it, would be written like this. Knit three, make a right slanting increase, so I'm going to turn it over look for the pearl bump that is the parent stitch. Don't be tempted to go into this position, that's knitting into the row below as if you were doing a brioche and it will make a gap in your knitting. Roll it over, slide your needle into the pearl bump and knit from that row below. So I've done knit three, I've done my right slanting increase and the rest of my directions for that row would read knit four. And this is an area of ambiguity. Other designers might actually consider the right slanting stitch increase and the stitch that it is to the right of to be all part of the increase. And you really would need to read the full definition written by the designer to determine what they actually mean. Now let's look at another kind of increase. We're back to the original seven stitches again. And this time, if I'd asked you to make a knit and purl increase into this stitch, my directions would read knit three, make a knit and purl increase, so I'm knitting, and I'm purling into the same stitch. And then knit three again. So a knit and purl increase actually uses a stitch of the row 
whereas a right slanting increase, the way I write it, doesn't actually use a stitch of the row. And this is where discrepancies can come in when you're working a pattern and they've asked you to make an increase every fifth stitch or um, some other spacing. And if you use one kind of increase and the designer was thinking of another kind of increase, you can get into to some accounting difficulties. But as long as you're aware of how this might have arisen, you can look at your row and determine what really are the correct numbers for the method of increasing you're using.